Now, the last M4 setup that I put out, it was called the most OP M4A1 setup. Most of you guys did enjoy that class setup. However, I've seen a lot of the comments saying that, yo, this build is too slow. You know, what about this and that, blah, blah, blah. So you know what? I came through with an aggressive class setup. So this is the aggressive class setup. First, before we get into the video, get you some G Fuel, man. I'm now partnered with G Fuel. Your boy made it, man. Turbo Nation is doing big things out here. And it would really mean a lot to me if you click that link below in the description and go get you some G Fuel. I think right now they've got an additional sale going on. So you best go on gfuel.com. And before you check out, make sure to put that code turbo in there to save you some money. And at the same time, it does support me as well. All right, so anyways, let's go ahead and just go over the class setup really quickly here. So we're running with the monolith expressor. You guys already know why I like that. Stay stealthy as possible. I do not want to be seen on the enemy compass. And now the barrel, the barrel is going to be the most important one here. It's going to be the Corvus custom marksman barrel. It gives you the second best damage range. The first one would be the stock M16 Grenadier, but however, the cons, they severely slow you down with your aim down sight speed and movement speed, whereas the Corvus Custom, it doesn't really affect your aim down and your movement speed as much as the M16 does. And plus, if you're playing multiplayer, you don't really need your damage range to be too OP. And since we're playing aggressive here, we're mostly going to be keeping our engagements up close and personal anyway. So that's why for the stock M16, if you're going to be playing on Warzone, just use the stock M16 Grenadier barrel and Warzone zone all right so for the stock yes we are running with the no stock i don't know what it is but ever since i put this bad boy back on that recoil control is not so bad it's really not that bad you can go ahead and try it out yourself and it's definitely well worth it for that boost in movement speed and aim down sight speed if speed and agility is more of your thing now, the other thing about the no stock attachment here is that having this Merc 4 grip under barrel is going to help us mitigate those negative effects. It's going to give us more recoil control and also hip fire accuracy. And a third hidden stat that you may or may not know about the Merc 4 grip is that it actually does increase your movement speed as well. It's not, you know, displayed here on the pros, but it actually does. Thanks to a website called Cod Gun Data. Make sure you check that link down below in the description. The owner actually also does try to live stream as well. So make sure you check him out show him some love in his stream so i'll leave all those links down below in the description all right so for the last attachment we're going to be running with a stippled grip tape this is going to give you aim down sight speed and sprint to fire speed basically this m4 build is kitted to help you get the most out of your aggressive type of situation so you're going to be playing up close and personal and you are going to have a really great advantage and it beams from distance as well thanks to the merc 4 grip it helps mitigate the negatives from the no stock attachment now i do have one other option for you guys if you guys do not want to run a monolith expressor you could take that off if you don't care about being seen or you're playing with your homies or whatever take that off and then put on the uh, 50 round mags the 50 round mags is not going to add too much uh, mobility negatives to your movement anyway so uh, you'll be just fine with the uh, merc 4 grip 50 round mags stipple grip tape no stock and corvus custom marksman so yeah this is option number two for the aggressive setup if you feel like you need more ammo so the next portion of the video is going to be a gameplay breaking down this exact same class setup how i use it and just going through the methodology between how i play the game my positioning my thought process etc if you guys want to learn make sure to stick around for the second half of the video and as for the rest of you guys if you came here just for the class setup i'd really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like on your way out it will show me that this is the kind of content that you want to continue to see and make sure to subscribe if you're new around here join turbo nation today make it official man we just got partnered with g fuel man doesn't that mean anything like come on man that's some big news right there so yeah guys um see you guys in the gameplay peace all right and here we are we're playing on hackney yard so yes i have covered hackney yard multiple times but the reason why i do want to show these kind of gameplays is to show you that that you can add some consistency to your game just based on your game sense you know how you play the game so right here i always take this dumpster take that head glitch just to take out any enemies that might be coming in from their spawn now watch as I duck and I just cover, duck and cover to make myself a harder target to hit. And as you can see, I was very patient there. At the beginning of every match, I'm always looking to see if there's enemies pushing. I don't, I don't really like to push too hard at the beginning of the match. I like to see everything unfold. Now in that situation, I turned in that direction because I knew that there was an enemy there. So now I'm going to take this high ground because if you look at the mini map, look at where my teammate is. He's on the bottom floor and, I'm, and now we're covering more ground. So unfortunately in that situation, that guy... What the... Uh, sorry about that, guys. I always forget to turn off my Twitch notifications. By the way, if you're on Twitch, make sure to follow me on Twitch to join the live streams. It's a good time, man. It's a good time. But anyways, back to the gameplay. But anyways, I just want to rewind back to this spot right here. So 
every time I'm on the move, I'm just looking at the minimap, looking at where my teammate's positioning is. So I just make the adjustments accordingly. I make these decisions really fast in game because I'm just used to it by now. And you know, with practice makes perfect. So if you take a look at the minimap, I got a teammate down there. It just makes absolutely no sense for me to go down there with him and see what he's looking at. It's better off that you cover more ground. And right here in this situation, I got the high ground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look in this direction into their spawn because that's where they're most likely gonna be at. So as you can see, I'm pre-aiming over here. And I also do not cross this corner. That's another very small example of little details that will help you survive more in the game. Because if I were to pass this little corner and I'm just aiming down sights, I'm for sure going to get blindsided by an enemy who might be standing over here on the left side of the map. So you always have to keep those small little details in mind. So I'm just pre-aiming. I'm waiting. He saw me and you know, I, I really don't know what happened there. Why I lost that gunfight. It could be just lag. You know, the servers have been really trash lately. So I don't know. But anyways, when I spawn back in here, I'm always looking to do the same exact thing. Insert myself in the correct lanes and try to cover more ground. Teammate just died right there. And there is a guy right here down below in this corner. I take him out quickly. That's why when you're playing, try not to tunnel vision it. Always have that wide view. Always be looking around your screen. Now in this situation, you know, I felt like I was just playing way too aggressive. So what my reasoning here in this situation was I saw those red footsteps right there. So I tried to make the connection and get this guy. I knew it was super risky because if I were to peek out here, which I did, I could have been shot from behind or potential enemies coming in from their spawn. So, you know, if you're watching this gameplay, do not do what I just did. Just be a little bit more patient, be a little bit more passive, and you'll probably not die off your streak. But here, as you can see, I wasn't even on a streak. So I wasn't really worried about it. You know, I was just trying to get back on a streak. So that's why I was playing rather aggressive right there. And that's how I died. So I see that my teammate is actually engaging in a gunfight. So I'm going to try to position myself towards the middle of the map. There you go. And I was able to get a kill, but yeah, that, that's got to be lag. I mean, on my end of the screen, I was already inside of the building, yet that guy was still able to clip me. So I'm going to go up here to see if I can actually find that enemy who was here. You never know. My teammates might be unaware that there was somebody up here. So I just want to make sure and make sure this guy never comes back. <laughs> All right. I thought that was an enemy at, at the moment. So I'm going to jump on top of this box. I'm going to pre-aim here. And as I came here, there was an enemy that popped up. So that gave me the easy kill. So I'm just going to pre-aim here just momentarily. And I'm using this head glitch to my advantage. Now that I see that my teammate is right here in front of me, that's when I decide it's okay to move. So that's what I'm talking about again is adjusting on the fly based on my teammates' positioning. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the building since he's already got this area covered. It makes no sense for me to, you know, compete for kills against my own teammate. So as you can see, me covering more ground resulted in that easy kill and yet another bonus kill that gave me a good vantage point of where the enemies might be. And also I'm covering more ground, which will result in more kills in case my teammate can't get it or he dies. So that's just a really, really good example of what I mean by filling in those lanes correctly and covering more ground. So now I got to turn my attention back. Huge announcement. I am now partnered with G Fuel. Turbo Nation making big moves. I think it looks absolutely great for the brand. And they thought I was good enough to represent their brand. So let's show them what Turbo Nation's about, man. Use code TURBO at checkout to help you save some money. In this direction, because I noticed that there wasn't any action going on in the opposite side of the map and there was no action in the middle. So that must mean that they must be over here in this spawn. So that's why I'm pre-aiming down here. Teammate took him out. I see those red footsteps. There's a guy right there on the head glitch. I'm not going to challenge yet. I'm just going to wait up to reload my ammo. Now I see this guy's head. So I toss my C4. I wait for him. Boom, baby. <laughs> Poor guy, man. That, okay, let me, let me explain that real quick. It's a very small detail as well. Now, the reason why I didn't just go down there and challenge him or step forward and pre-aim to challenge the guy, even if I knew he was coming, is because if I were to stand right here, the guy that was on the head glitch that was almost about to kill me earlier, he's just going to kill me. I'm going to get blindsided. So another, another small detail. It's all about the details, guys. If you guys haven't noticed by now, it's all about the details. So that's why I didn't move forward. You know what? I figured I had a C4. Why not just use it and detonate it as soon as he comes in? So this was the play that resulted in that. So now I got my UAV, got more information on here. Now I'm going to switch my location. I notice these red footprints, but I decide not to pursue it because I know my teammates, you know, they're outnumbering the enemy that could possibly be there. And I'd rather cover more ground. So I'm going to come out here and pre-aim. Notice how I jump out of that door instead of just casually walking out. Now I'm not able to get the shot on this guy, but look what I do here. I adjust my positioning, get the high ground once again. And I'm just going to wait for him. I know he's behind that box. He thinks I'm still down there. Just be patient with it. Boom. There he is right there. 
So that's another very good example of, you know, how positioning and switching up and switching up your location is going to give you an advantage. Now, my teammates are getting taken out here. So the reason why I rotated here to the middle is because I noticed all the action and all the enemies are coming in from this small little area. So just think of it as a bubble. All right. So this is the bubble of action. And what I'm doing is I'm essentially just from the outside looking into that bubble, if that makes sense. So I'm kind of like patrolling the borders here. And at the same time, I'm keeping an eye right here. And at the same time, I'm gatekeeping this area where I know the enemies are going to be coming from because they only spawn in from this back half of the map. So I'm basically gatekeeping right now. And I'm also still staying in my own lane, covering more ground, which will result in easier kills. So again, here I am. I'm pre-aiming, right? I'm just being patient. I'm waiting. There you go. I just gatekeep one guy. So now I'm going to rotate a little bit back and uh, retreat here because now it's a possibility that the enemies might be pushing me over here now that they've seen my location you know the enemy team might be communicating saying that there's somebody behind that box so i want to switch it up you know i want to play mind games with these guys now there was a guy on a head glitch that i actually did not catch he was like right there so i immediately step out of the way i stim shot and now we're flashed so i go prone once again just to avoid dying I'm going to pre-aim over here to see if I can get the kill. Now, watch what I do to retreat myself from this situation. This is actually a very sticky situation. You could actually get caught by enemies who might be over here in this area. So, look how I use these crates to my advantage to slowly retreat myself from the situation and reposition myself. You know, instead of just running against the wall over here and that resulted in a kill, this guy had no idea I was here. And also, if you didn't notice, I did that nice little slide cancel around the corner just like that. And it, it makes it so much easier to just aim in on your opponents and ADS a lot faster when you're doing that around corners. Now, you don't have to do that around every corner, but it just helps, especially when you're going into buildings and whatnot. So now that I found a very nice location and safe location at that to call my VTOL, I'm hoping this is going to give us some momentum moving forward into the match. So I'm just going to wait for my VTOL to do its thing. And I'm going to pre-aim because there might be enemies. Yep, there's one right there by the door. Look how I go around this uh, forklift and I take him out. Pretty much just finesse the guy, basically. So watch what I do here. He thinks I'm still around that corner. As you can see, he's not even looking at me. And I got the clear advantage right there. So always try to outsmart your opponents whenever possible. Juke them as much as possible. So, so this guy, he dodged my bullets. I thought about it and you know what? I'm not going to pursue that guy. I'm three kills off of my advanced UAV. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to switch my location and I'm going to go into here. All right. So my next move is to go on top of the box outside just in a moment. I'm checking all my sites to see if it's clear and it's safe. So, you know, at this point, the reason why I didn't go up here right away is because I know for a fact that there's going to be enemies that are going to be spawning in from there from this point of the map right here so if i were to go up here i can get shot from behind and of course we don't want that and with the VTOL out i can't really hear much so i'm just gonna chill here just for a little bit now i know i saw this guy moving across the screen that's why right there he's right there so i went ahead and tried to beat him to the spot i cut the corner and i met him at the end point where i assumed he was gonna be and that's how i got the easy kill so instead of this just literally chasing him down i just went ahead and took the shortcut so i'm also checking for this enemy that could be in that building still. Now, I swiftly hug the wall right here just to make sure that I'm safe. Uh, keep moving. I hear footsteps down here. Jump around that corner, take them by surprise, and now I've got my advanced UAV. So now we've got the enemies exposed on the minimap. It makes things a lot easier. I nearly almost died to that person that I should have killed earlier. So I'm very weary of that. Also, pay attention to how much ammo you have left. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do here is a big mistake. You know, I knew there were two enemies there. I think I was just, that was just an ego child, to be honest with you. And I shouldn't have done that if I wanted to stay on my streak, but that's maybe something you can learn from me. Unfortunately, that guy caught me. He had the higher ground and I was just coming off of my mantle animation right there, but not that time, man. I won that gunfight. So yeah, always keep in mind of how much ammo you have left because we're only rocking 30 rounds here. Ooh, baby, that finesse. So this is another good example of just you know, at this point, uh, mid gunfight right here, I was just deciding, should I just, you know, ADS on this guy or should I just toss my C4 and jump to the side of the corner? You know, I just wanted to be a little fancy here. It's not something that I do recommend you guys to do. But, you know, of course, when you get used to the game mechanics and you're more comfortable with the controller or whatever you're on, uh, you can do stuff like this. So I just threw my C4 
and I double tap my square because I'm playing on PS4. Bam! He's dead. He did splits in midair. That was pretty funny. So here I am again. I'm just going to slowly creep my way into their spawn. Slide canceling on point. Going to call in this UAV. Just going to stim shot myself here just so I can recover faster because I know I'm deep in the spawn right now. Got that guy around that slide cancel again. Now what I'm going to try to do is going to get high ground. High ground so I can have better vantage point here. So watch what I do here. It's pretty interesting. So I know that there's an enemy right here. That's why I'm going to pre-aim over here because I'm assuming he's going to move to this middle window. However, if you look at the mini map, there is also someone else here. So watch what I do. So my teammate is busy. He just died, right? Now I have decisions to make. Am I going to prioritize the guy here or the guy that's closest to me? You guess it right. I'm going to prioritize the guy that's closest to me. So I'm going to switch my, my aim. Bam! Took him out and swiftly redirected my positioning into where I saw that original guy. So that's how I was able to accomplish that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call my VTOL. The game's almost over. And I, I shouldn't have done this either. I just wanted the game to end. And I rushed in there blindly. And that's how I died. So yeah, guys, that's the end of the gameplay. Lots of good tips and tricks here for you guys to learn. Hopefully you guys actually did learn something. And if you did, make sure to drop a like on it. Show some love. You know, I'm going to continue putting out these break day, break, oh, excuse me, breakdown gameplay videos if you guys want to continue seeing this. And the final score is 29 kills and 6 deaths. Not too bad. We struggled a little bit in the beginning, but we made a bit of an adjustment there. And as you can see, it's just proper positioning, learning how to read the enemy, and just trying to outsmart the enemy as much as you possibly can. You know, that will definitely get you the dub and get you higher streaks. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe if you're new around here. Turn on notifications if you have not yet. And I will see you guys in the next gameplay. Peace.